Okay, so now again we have an expression which relates theta and B. Theta is the scattering angle and B is the impact parameter, initial impact parameter, uh, and also as a, you know, for a particular uh, set of initial conditions characterized by the initial velocity, the mass, <clears throat> the charge, basically the atomic numbers of the two, of the both the um, incoming particle and the scattering particle. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and now um, in order to find the relationship which we're after, we're after uh, an expression for b is a function of theta. We just basically have to solve this uh, equation for for b, okay? And when we do this, we get that b of theta is equal to little z times big z e squared over four pi epsilon naught v sub zero squared m times one over tangent of theta over two. And if we make the substitution, um, basically uh, at uh, for non the non-relativistic case, uh, that the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy, is equal to one half m v naught squared. Then we get this expression, where now we have the uh, kinetic energy at the bottom. So you see that <coughs> this provides a nice simple um, relationship between b and theta. Now, this relationship implies that there's a one-to-one -one um, correspondence between B and theta. That is the initial impact parameter for the particle coming in and um, in theta, the, the angle through which it scatters. Now remember this is the, where we've assumed at the beginning that this is a sort of a cylindrically symmetric situation. So um, uh, all, uh, no matter what the, um, in the three-dimensional case, what matters is just B. Okay, and, and so a particular impact parameter B will map to an, uh, sort of a, a, a circle uh, of e equal thetas relative to the initial direction um, if, the, if the incoming particle is in a, slightly, is in a different plane. Okay? So in any case, there's a one-to-one there's a, a -one relationship between B and theta, which means that um, a particular particle would be scattered to a particular theta depending on its initial impact parameter. Now, most of the time scattering experiments are not done with individual particles, but they're done with beams of particles that have many different particles, and we assume that they're all going in the same direction and that the beam is uniform, okay? And then <clears throat> what we realize is that, uh, that uh, particles, incoming particles in the beam that pass through an annular uh, differential cross-section the sigma, which is equal to 2 pi, 2 pi b, which is the uh, circumference of the inner part of the circle, uh, times db, so that's the area of this annulus. So the particles which pass through from the beam, which pass through that little annulus, will scatter into a differential um, cross-sectional area, a differential solid angle, d omega, okay? And um, and so again, the number of particles which pass through this annulus has to equal the number of particles per unit time, which uh, which scatter into this um, into this uh, differential uh, uh, solid angle d omega. Okay, and so we can write an expression um, for that. So basically. Um, 2 pi times i, uh, well let me write this in a different way, okay, so the intensity of the initial beam, that's the number of particles per unit area per unit time, times 2 pi b db, that's the number of particles per unit time which pass through this uh, differential cross-sectional area, d sigma, is equal to i times d sigma d omega, the differential cross-section, times the differential solid angle. <clears throat> okay, so this tells you, this is where the physics is, as we discussed in the last lecture, d sigma d omega, the differential cross-section, this is where all the physics is. This tells you how each beam particle with a particular cross-section, with a particular um, impact parameter b, scatters into a particular solid angle. Okay, so it's the transfer function for the scattering. 